hello, hello, and welcome to a another video. It's been a long time since I've released one, but I figured one was due. So today we have talked about the flags of all the states. But now we are going to go over the territories. And it'll be the territories of the U.S. Um, as always, I have my notebook. All my notes in it. So I'll be kind of using it to read off to you what we have, so. But, yes. Um, how about we begin here, because there are a lot of territories. A lot more than you would think. So, here we go. The U.S. has inhabited and uninhabited, uninhabited territories. Um, it has five inhabited territories. Puerto Rico, American Samoa, Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the Northern Mariana Islands. Now, it has several uninhabited territories. Baker Island, Howland Island, Johnson, uh, Jarvis Island, Johnston Atoll, Kingman Reef, Midway Atoll, Navassa Island, Palmyra Atoll, Wake Island, Bajo Nuevo Bank, also known as Petrol Island, and the Serenia Bank. So, um, those are the list of all the territories of the U.S. Um, so let's talk about our inhabited territories first. We'll begin with Puerto Rico. Its capital is in San Juan. And the name is Spanish uh, for rich port. Uh, the first people to be found on the island arrived at least 4,000 years ago from South America, given the oldest skeleton found on the island is from 2000 B.C. 2000 BC to 00, zero to 2080. It's 4,000 years, give or take some. Um, between the 7th and 11th centuries, the Taino people came to Puerto Rico, and by 1000 AD, the Taino culture was dominant. So, that's the natives of Puerto Rico, the Taino. When Columbus arrived on the island during his second voyage in 1493, altogether he had four voyages, the first famous one in 1492, but this one was the second in 
1493. The Taino population was approximately 30,000 to 60,000 people, led by Chief Aguebana, or Aguyebana. I'm, I'm not sure, I, I guarantee you I butchered the name. And I apologize, I'm, uh, but I'm trying to pronounce it the best I can. Um, Juan Ponce de Leon, who was a lieutenant under Columbus and a conquistador in his own right, was the first governor of Puerto Rico and founded the first Spanish settlement, Capara, in August the 8th, 1508. So it was discovered in 1493, and by 1508, they had their first settlement. So, 15 years later. Regardless of laws of Burgos and others, uh, other documents meant to protect natives outside Spain, some Taino were forced into a type of labor called the encomienda system, which demanded the paying of a wage, minimal housing and care, and the exemption of work of women four months, months or more pregnant. So, not quite chattel slavery but still slavery nonetheless. They were basically guaranteed certain things, but they still had to work. Now, European diseases decimated the Taino people who were the who were then emancipated in 1520 since the slave trade of African slaves across the Atlantic was now in full swing so um the Taino were not used to the same diseases as Europeans. But Europeans had already had contact with Africa for a long time. You know. So, there was not as much issue as far as disease decimating an African population that Europeans got, so it was still not fun. I mean, when you get a code, it's still not fun. You'll live, you're fine, but you're still catching a disease, but it didn't kill and decimate the population the way it did to the Taino. After numerous revolts on the island, Spain uh, agreed to grant the island some level of autonomy. And in July of 1898, the general elected government started to function, taking their posts. So they were granted some level of self-rule. Spain still owned the island, still in general ruled over it. Sorry if I'm kind of tilting my head backward and forward. It, it, it's like the camera's flipped on me for some reason, so. So I want to apologize for that. 
Um, in late April of 1898, Spain and the United States uh, went to war. The U.S. invaded Puerto Rico in July of 1898. So remember, their autonomy was granted and they, the general elected people went to their posts in July of 1898. So the war happened and in that same month, the U.S. invaded, which was only eight days after Puerto Rico's general elected government um, had taken effect. So there's a difference of eight days from, hey, we got our own government to, you're now invaded. So, um, Hostilities between Spain and the U.S. Uh, ended in August of 1898. And a treaty was signed by Spain on December the 10th, 1898. And by the U.S. February the 6th, 1899. So same treaty is just signed months apart. All right. Uh, Spain ceded its territories of Guam, Cuba, the Philippines, and Puerto Rico to the U.S., with whom it remains a territory today. We no longer own Cuba or the Philippines, but we still own Puerto Rico and Guam. So, now, let's talk about Puerto Rico's flag. It's a red, white, and blue. Um, and on the left hand side it has a blue triangle with one star in it and the rest of the flag is um one two three four five 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 um bars stripes there red white red white red so and that's really what uh, Puerto Rico's flag looks like. With that done, the done, with that done, let's um, proceed and talk about the other territory we still have that we won from Spain, Guam. Guam's capital is Hagatna, 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 I believe. Again, I apologize for the butchering of the names, but I am trying my best. Guam lies in the Pacific just north of Australia and New Zealand to the south um, it, yeah just north of Australia and New Zealand and southeast of Japan so it's in the Pacific there just above Australia New Zealand and below um, Japan so, um, the natives were the Chamorro people who were also 
um, the natives of the Northern Mariana Islands. Like the Taino in Puerto Rico, they were in Guam as early as 2000 BC. The first European to settle, um, to set foot in Guam was Ferdinand Magellan, a Portuguese navigator uh, sailing in the service of Spain. Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands were officially claimed by Spain in January of 1565 and quickly became the last Spanish outpost if traveling the Pacific to the Americas. So if you're leaving the Pacific, that's the last Spanish port you have in the Pacific before you hit the West Coast. Like Puerto Rico, Guam was ceded to the U.S. after the Spanish-American War. The island again saw a lot of action as a point of conflict in the Pacific between the United States and Japan during World War II. Now, let's talk about Guam's flag. Give me a moment to pull it up here. There it is, Guam. Do, 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 do. Computer's going slow. It's a red border just all the way around. Kind of almost scarlet more than red. It's kind of deeper. But um, inside it's a blue flag. And in the very center you have an, a football oblong shaped um, I guess crest it's bordered in red just like the flag and in the in it in the picture you have one palm tree uh, rising from the beach and behind it you have water a boat on the water and in the distant background you see mountains and that's Guam's flag so very simple like Puerto Rico's now let's go to the third of the US's inhabited territories and this will be the Northern Mariana Islands. Now, uh, their capital is Saipan, or Capitol Hill. So, uh, much of its history is the same as Guam's, be, being the largest island uh, in the Mariana Islands, but its own nation, which these territories have their own autonomy. Uh, they run much like a state. They have their own governments, own identity, but they are still owned by the U.S., still part of the collective. I hate to make it sound like the Borg from Star Trek, but... Um, 
after the Spanish-American War, Spain sold the um, uh, Northern Marianas to Germany, who does little with the Mariana Islands. Following Germany's defeat in World War I, the Northern Marianas, along with all of Germany's islands in the Pacific, north of the equator, were awarded to Japan, who opposed Germany in World War One. But <laughs> Japan produced sugar cane on the islands, um, and during this period, population on the islands grew with the Japanese, the Koreans, the Taiwanese, all swelling the uh, population in the in the Marianas. Now, in the Second World War, Japan was uh, this time allied with Germany, and they invaded Guam from the Marianas. Um, in fact, not aware of World War II was over, one Japanese soldier, Shoichi Yokoi, hid in a cave on Guam until 1972. Remember, the war ended in 45. So yeah, 27 years. After Japan's defeat, the Northern Mariana Islands came under U.S. jurisdiction. And that's how we came to hold the Northern Marianas, which, you know, clearly wasn't that long. It was after World War II, so... Not even a century, unlike Puerto Rico and Guam, we've held for, well, since the 1900s. Now, let's look at the Northern Mariana Island flag. There it is. It's a blue flag, and in the middle... It has a circle of flowers, uh, I guess native to the island, uh, one would suppose. But it has like a full circle, not just like a wreath does where it's partial. And, and inside that circle you have some kind of stand with an orb on it. I'm not sure what that is. Again, I apologize. I am going with the best of my knowledge offhand here. And over that, they have a big white star. And that is the flag of the Northern Mariana Islands. And that will bring us to our next territory, which is American Samoa. American Samoa was known to be inhabited as early as 850 AD. The original people were Polynesian in origin. American Samoa is also known as Eastern Samoa, since it is part of a chain that includes Western Samoa and Independent Samoa. Honestly, I think it should be its own nation and get to unite the Samoas, but 
That's the way it is at the moment. The first known European contact with Samoa um, was in 1722 when a, a Dutch explorer, uh, Jacob Roggenveen, uh, sighted the islands. So the Dutch, the, the the Netherlands, which is, I think, just above Germany on the continent. Um, in the eighteen hundreds, uh, it came. Oh, it became, sorry, I couldn't read my own writing. <laughs> it became the stopover in the Pacific for French, British, German, and American ships. In March of 1889, three German warships arrived on Samoa and destroyed American property. Three American warships arrived to engage the German ships, but before any shots were fired, a typhoon destroyed all the ships, <laughs> forcing an armistice. So, nature kind of said, quit being petulant little children. <laughs> In 1899, the Tripartite Convention um, divided the Samoan Islands between the United States and Germany. The Eastern Samoa Islands went to the U.S. and Western Samoa to Germany. In 1918, while the flu had ravaged the rest of the world, American Samoa was one of only three locations worldwide to prevent deaths from the flu pandemic, the influenza pandemic. So, if you know anything about history, the influenza pandemic hit in the 1800s or not 1800s, but the um, 19 teens, and was just deadly. You would think something like the flu wouldn't be that bad, but back then, it was a killer. It was devastating. But uh, American Samoa was only one of three places worldwide that had prevented death from the uh, pandemic of influenza. Now, in 1925, um, Swain's Island was annexed and added to American Samoa. The island is disputed as to ownership between the U.S. and the island that something I guess the island of Tokele, Tokelau, which the island has long been, but the island has long been a part of the chain. So, um, Tokelau claims it's 
Swain's Islands. It uh, belongs to it, but um, U.S. says Swain's Island is part of American Samoa, which has always kind of been seen that way by a lot of other nations. Now, American Samoa's flag. Um, along the top and the bottom is just blue, and then on the right you have a red triangle. Inside that triangle is white, and you have a bald eagle carrying two scepters in its paws. In, in, in its claws, in its talons. So. And that is the flag of American Samoa. And with that, we have one more inhabited territory. And that is the U.S. Virgin Islands. The U.S. Virgin Islands, their uh, capital is Charlotte Amelie, and the first known people on the Virgin Islands were the Guanahata Bay during the Stone Age. Guan, Guanat, Guanahata Bay. Um, Again, I apologize if I am butchering these names, so. Um, at some point, the Arawaks arrived from the Amazon River Valley and Orinoco River region of Brazil and Venezuela. Um, their society and culture uh, of the Arawaks flourished for hundreds of years until the, arri the arrival of the Caribs. The Caribs came from the same region as the Arawaks and may have been distant relatives, but were far more warlike. Rumors by the Europeans were that the Caribs devoured their opponents, giving rise to the word cannibalism, er, cannibal in Spanish, which uh, developed into the English word cannibal, or cannibal, blah, blah, blah. So, cannibal and cannibal. Um, their actual tendencies towards cannibalism, though, is not known to be true, whether it is true or not, so. Um, Europeans first discovered the islands in 1493 when Columbus was on his second voyage. So on the second voyage he discovered Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Um, he named the islands for Saint Ursula and her virgin followers. Columbus discovered and named the islands but did not colonize them. Um, France and Denmark moved in to colonize the area. Diseases, murder, and
slavery. Again, I can't even read my own writing sometimes. Destroyed the island, or destroyed the native population, to the point that in the late 1600s, the Arawaks were gone, and few Caribs remained. This forced colonialists to begin the um, African slave trade in 1673. In 1899, the U.S. tried to unsuccessfully purchase the islands from Denmark. In 1917, during World War I, a treaty was signed that actually sold the islands from Denmark to the U.S. for $25 million dollars or 900, 390 million um, in 2010. So, the countries, the, the, the little islands, along with Puerto Rico, are closest inhabited territories. So, yeah, because I believe the Virgin Islands are just off the coast of Florida, if I remember correctly. And then I know Puerto Rico is a little further south. So, but let's talk about um, the flag of the Virgin Islands. If I can find it. Ah, the U.S. Virgin Islands flag. There it is. Open up. It is a white flag um, on the left side it has a blue V and on the right it has a blue I for Virgin Islands and in the center you have basically the one of the American emblems the, the eagle wing spread uh, talons spread the American shield um, on its body with it like looking to the side the eagle itself is in a gold color complete gold so in one talon it has a branch and in the other it has arrows so that is the flag of the Virgin Islands now those are occupied territories are inhabited territories let's talk a bit about our uninhabited territories which aren't as full of history though some have a bit of history so these will go a little quicker the first one I want to talk about is Bajo Nuevo Bank, or the Petrol Islands. The islands are, of course, like I said, uninhabited, but there is a dispute over um, who owns the islands. And it's between the U.S., Colombia, Jamaica, Nicaragua and Honduras. So, I feel honestly it should just be leased to someone in South America. We should just back off of it because it's closer to South America than it is to us. We don't need it. 
There is no flag. Baker Island. Um, this is an uninhabited atoll, uh, atoll, and there is no flag. See, like I said, some of these go very quick. There's some that's got some history, but. Howland Island. It is an uninhabited atoll, and it is the island Amelia Earhart was looking for when her plane disappeared. So when she crashed and di or disappeared, she was looking for ha Howland Island as a stopping point. Um, Jarvis Island, formerly known as Bunker Island. Some settlements were tried on the island with no real success. So as of now, it's uninhabited. And there is no official flag. Johnston Atoll. The island is uninhabited. The atoll was uh, has been used by the military uh, for numerous reasons, even garnering its own base, but that closed in 2004. And we do have an unofficial flag for Johnston Ato. So let me pull that up. I think I've got it somewhere. Hmm. I apologize for the time pulling these up here. I've had the resources for a while, but I uh, just haven't um, taken use of them. I've, I don't know. I guess I've been a bit down um, as of lately as, as far as making videos. So Now, on it, where is the flag? Well, I guess I don't have an image of the Johnston Atoll flag. Um, the next one, next, so let's go on to the next territory. Kingman Reef. Um, most of the reef is just submerged, so. And it is halfway between uh, American Samoa and Hawaii. Uh, but it does have its own flag, and I do have a visual of it. Let's pull it up. On the bottom, it's just gray, and on the top, it's teal with a picture of a shark. That It's an unofficial flag, but it's the flag of the uh, Kingman Reef, so there you go. Now, let's go on to our next territory here. The Midway Atoll, or Midway Island. Islands. The islands get the name Midway for being midway between Asia and North America. So literally, they're right in the middle of the Pacific. Um, it is a collection of islands 
um, and submerged reefs. So it's islands and reefs reaching from Hawaii up to the tip of the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. Altogether, the islands have some 30 miles of roads and emergency airfields on it. Um, these were in full activity during World War II, especially during the Battle of Midway. And uh, we do have an unofficial flag. I believe I have that one. Or maybe not. But it does have an unofficial flag to it. But it is called Midway Atoll or the Midway Islands. So let's go ahead and talk about the next island. Navassa Island. It is a two mile long island that sits to the west of Haiti, uh, south of Cuba, and east of Jamaica. It has uh, ownership that is debated between the U.S. and Haiti. It mainly serves as a wildlife refuge. And there is no flag. Now the next island we have is the Pal Palmyra Atto. It is the southernmost incorporated uh, territory of the U.S. American Samoa is further south, but is un unincorporated. Um, it is the only incorporated but unoccupied territory. <laughs> The Palmyra was, at, Atto was originally part of the territory of the Hawaiian, uh, Hawaii during its sovereignty before it was taken over and became a state. Um, and it too mainly serves as a wildlife refuge. It does have an unofficial flag. I'm trying to see if I have a copy of it. Some of these flags I don't have copies of. And I do apologize. It's hard to get a hold of a lot of them because they are unofficial. Okay, so I don't seem to have that. Uh, the next one we want to talk about, almost, almost done here, it's been a while, it's, it's taken a while to go through all these, but I told you the, un uh, the un uninhabited ones go through fairly quick. Serenia Bank. It is a partially submerged reef in the Caribbean. And it is disputed between the U.S., Colombia, and Honduras. In 2012, the International Court of Justice ruled that Colombia had sovereignty 
uh, beyond not, uh, Nicaragua over the bank. And there is no flag. Wake Island. Although the island was discovered by Europeans in 1568, um, the Marshall Islands claimed they arrived, uh, members of the uh, Marshall Islands claimed they arrived at the island before and settled the island before Europeans even spotted it even though there is no evidence of a temporary or permanent settlement. The island was named after Captain Samuel Wake of the British merchant vessel Prince William Henry in 1796. The U.S. claimed Wake Island uh, on February the 7th or January the 17th, 1899. So you notice a lot of these territories became U.S. territories 1898-1899. The island was used for scientific, military, or scientific and military purposes. It was even, uh, it even suffered Japanese attacks and occupation during World War II at the Battle of Wake Island. Um, it even served as a transport and refueling stop in the Pacific for troops on their way to the Korean War front. It also served as the location that Vietnamese refugees were airlifted to. Uh, the island has no permanent inhabitants, but maintains a military presence. It does have an unofficial flag, and I do have a copy uh, image of that. Um, it's got a white, oh, let's see, it has kind of a blue side on the left and a white bar and a red bar, white on top of red. In the blue you have star, star, star in kind of a triangle formation and inside that you have a, a, yellow, a yellow circle that says Wake Island with kind of an outline of the island. And that is the flag unofficially of Wake Island. And um, yeah, that's it for the territories. And that'll give you an overlook of all the US states and the territories and how they kind of look. I will probably go over try to do a video on the flags of um, history and flags of Canada for the, uh, the, the, the provinces like Alberta and British Columbia and all that. So, and it should be shorter since they have, what is it, eight or nine of them? It'll be a lot easier to do. I could probably fit them all into one video. But for now, Educate thyself, think, read, study, learn. Don't be a moron, <laughs> honestly. Don't, don't. 
don't feel overwhelmed by use of intelligence. Learn things for yourself. Just make sure you use good sources. And as always, I'll try to have another video up Friday. Can't promise, but I'm going to try to have it up. I'm feeling better today, though. Who knows how I'll be feeling later. But for now, I love you all. Y'all have a good one. And I'll see you again. Later.